What's going on YouTube, this is Tangmeister, and we are taking the time to review a little manga series that I call UQ Holder. And this is a special occasion because it is a new series started up by Ken Akamatsu, and who is known for doing uh, works like Negama and Love Hina. And the reason I'm doing this is, first off we gotta go on a little background on me and Negama. So, Negama is a series that I have read for the past six, six years, since I was middle school, right? And then it, it just ended last year, so... When Negama was still in serial, it was a series that I read every week, religiously, consistently, obsessively. So, it was the, the series that I read Sure, there was other stuff like Naruto and Bleach and One Piece that were also weekly, which were released weekly on a regular basis in Shonen Jump, Japan. But it was all negative, all my time and uh, investment was put into that. So when it ended, I was a sad panda. But Ken Akamatsu, a year later, then decided to make a new series called UQ Holder. And then... Anyway... So we're going to be talking about it while I play Batman Arkham City. It's a ch the challenge map. So because what better way to talk about the main characters who happens to be vampires than with a guy who dresses up as a bat. It's perfect. In theory, anyway. So anyway, this manga series, oh yeah, I pronounce it as manga because we are an American in an American setting. I know it's pronounced as manga, but... I mean, I took Japanese for two years, so you don't have to tell me. People are going to tell me up anyway. So, we are in an American setting. So, and it's been something that I've been saying for the past ten years. So, we're going to pronounce it as such. Yeah. Now, this series is the sequel to Negama in a way. It's set 60 years after the end of Nagama, so 2062 I believe, or 2064, somewhere around there. And it stars Tota Konoe, and for those who know have been reading Nagama, they would know that as one of the main characters that accompanied Negi on his journey sometime. Actually, what am I saying? She was always consistently there, along with her faithful servant friend Setsuna. Now, his now Tota's parents died supposedly in a car crash two years ago, and he has amnesia. And he has been taken in by Miss Yukihime, who is said to be responsible for this crash. Anyway, Tota and his friends, who are being taught by Yukihime, are constantly trying to beat her in combat. And the reason is that if they were to beat her, they would get a chance to go to the capital, where it is their dream to go up the massive elevator that Negi put up, set up, whatever. But they never do it, so one day when they're trying to ambush her, they find that she can use magic. And they all, they're all trying to be, oh, teach us magic, please, 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 and no dice with her. So a little later, that one of the teachers, Tachibana, Decides that he'll try teaching them some magic as well. So, um, most of most of Toa's friends can do the magic, but he can't. So Tachibana gives him a little bracelet to give to Yukihime, which is ac would actually blocks magic. Tota gives Yukihime the blurry slit as a present, and the next day she gets ambushed by the kids. Minus Tota, who is running late at the moment, and use some binding magic on her. So when she tries to use her magic, she sees that it's because of the bracelet, and she can't do her magic. And she pulls off a little incantation that's very reminiscent of somebody in Negama. But when before the kids can pull off the finishing blow, they are ambushed in turn by Mr. Tachibana, who is actually a bounty hunter who wants uh, Yukihime's head for like an insane amount of yen. Go figure, she has a bounty, okay. So, so Tajiban tries to kill her, but Tota gets in, the, gets in the way, 
No, everybody's just leaving their guard down, and <laughs> Toto gets his arm chopped off. And poor Toto, oh, excuse me, Ta uh, Tachibana can pull off the finishing blow on him. Yukihime gets in the way and blocks the sword strike, and she gets chopped off in pieces. And Toto's in total, total agony because it's his fault that this has this happened. Like, if he hadn't given the bracelet, then. Yukihime wouldn't be dead, and Tachibana then pulls off the finishing blow and pierces him in the heart. So, uh, Tota is d laying down dying on his stomach, and Yukihime, he's hearing Yukihime talking to him, he's like, oh, I'm probably, it's like, I'm probably dead, that, I can, that's why I can hear. But no, she's actually still alive, even though she's been chopped to pieces. And it's because... And she goes, it's too hard to explain, and also tells him that he should also be dead, but it's because of her that he's still alive. Anyway, she gives two options, to die or to drink her blood, which is pouring out of the many wounds that are from her body pieces that are all over the place. And she faints, so Toda drinks the blood to save her, everybody basically, from Tachibana. And he basically becomes an immortal vampire monster, I guess you could say as well. But it's a vampire because I'll explain it later. So he drinks her blood, beats up Tachibana, and then faints. So when he wakes up, he finds that Yukihime is alright, all put back to pieces, and so is he. And with his head in her lap, and Yukihime explains everything, so it is actually that she is Evangeline from Negama, the lolly vampire, and she has given him somewhat of her powers because he drank her blood, and she has, with regret, done this to him. But Tota's not having this. No, no, he's 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 glad that she's okay and that he's immortal, but she's telling him that immortality isn't everything. And then Toda punches her in the gut. Get, goes, it's alright, so we're almost at the end of the chapter, and because Yukihime's identity has been revealed, it's time for them to both leave the, the little town that they have been living in for the past two years. So Toda promises his friends that they'll meet again later in the, um, the capital. So they leave and the chapter ends. Now this chapter was... But this is a first chapter and it got right into the thick of things, so... If you were to read like the first volume of Negama for me, it was extremely slow. If you were to tell me to just go read it, I would probably say no, I don't want to read it. It's too, uh... Too, too too hard to get into again. But this this got right into it, which is really surprising, so and it's it sets the tone and everything, so it's gonna be like action adventure, maybe a little bit of romance, because uh, I feel that there he might that Ken Akamatsu might be trying to go with a romance option with Evangeline and Toda because uh, if anyone remembers at the end of Negama, they're referring to uh, to her and her her love, but that was another story to be told. So this might be the story that we were promised in a way. And I kind of re I really like this chapter. I really I like how it started. So it, it's like it was basically the uh, to develop the characterization of Toda and um, Evangeline. Like, Toda's your basic, he, but it does do some cliches with the main character, because he's your basic amnesic, amnesia guy. Like, if you've played Fire Emblem, plenty of games do it, they they do it constantly, like, it gets annoying sometimes, but he's very... How should I say it? He's into the training, like, like, he, um, like, when Yukihime, and I'm, I'm gonna, like, like, switch around from Yukihime and Evangeline, so excuse me for that. Like, she got a ticket 
to the zoo hoping to go with him on a Sunday, but he's he goes, no, no, we're not having that. No, we're we're gonna go train because because if he were to miss a day, it would, it would it would probably kill him or something to to miss a day of training with her. And it, it this chapter does an okay job characterizing Toda, Toda, excuse me. Although for for me, I liked him. He was an alright character. So I mean, to be honest, if you Negi was an okay character as well. I'm only near the only near the middle. He starts to really get there, you know, with Negi. So we're probably gonna see the same thing with Toda. It's the first chapters. Give it a break. Now Evangeline or Miss Yukihime, as if you want to call her, we'll see what they decide to refer to her as for Toda. We'll see how he refers to her. He'll probably just keep calling her Yukihime. But okay, so anyway. Miss Yukihime, Evangeline, whatever. She's mellowed out. Wow, I mean... From Negma, she was such a mean girl. But we just loved her for it. But I guess hanging out with the, uh, the group from Negma mellowed her out. And she's a lot nicer, I have to say. Although she's still got that killer aura aura around her, like, um, at, uh, at one part. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Maybe I'll show it. Maybe this one. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. So, she, even though she's mellowed out, she's still a little crazy. She can't cook, at least, so it's up to Toda to do that. But they, they've been living together for two years, and it's kinda, kinda awkward for me to see that. Because I've never seen her act in such a way. But it's not a bad thing. I mean, we all want her this. So, I'm not sure, but I think this will probably be a weekly. I think this is a weekly, because... Well, we'll see, though. I think this will be a weekly, not a monthly. But, either way, if it's a monthly, he'll have... the Kenakamatsu Kenok will have a lot more time to... Hopefully, think out the story and stuff. I mean, this is a year after Negma ended. But, the weird thing is that the tone of this series... It's very uh, much about um, the negatives of immortality because Evangeline shows a bit of regret for being an immortal person because she outlives everybody she knows. But she's found companionship with Toto, hopefully, because Toto drank her blood and now will be an immortal being as well. But I, I am looking forward to this series since I have something to read again. <laughs> but I I will put up new uh, reviews of the each chapter. And knowing the guy who made Negama, it's probably going to be a long series. Hopefully. Maybe not. I don't think it, it will be that long. But if it does be that long, I'm going to be in a long ride for this stuff. So, do I recommend that you read this? Yes and no, it depends, really. If you read Negama and was and you were really flabbergasted by the ending and were shocked, angered, saddened, then you'd probably want to read this just to see how it ends up. But you might want to wait for a few more chapters because for some people, I can probably see that this chapter is kind of slow or uninteresting because of the cliched main character, main char male main character. And if you haven't read Negama, then um, you should probably start n at Negama and then read this, because I feel that this, that this series will refer back to it constantly. You don't think so? Um, I'm probably thinking so. It's probably going to refer back to the series, the, the previous series. So if you want to start at Negama, start it now before UQ Holder gets really incontrollable in terms of numbers of chapters if, you know, Kenakamatsu plans to drag this on. So start now, and then start UQ Holder. But if you don't want to read Negama and just wants to start this, Wikipedia it, like Wikipedia it now, so you don't get lost. And then start. 
but I'm looking forward to this series, so we'll see. I'm hyped. So hyped. There's nothing that can bring me down. So we are going to stop right there, guys. I'm going to, when the next chapter comes up, I'll be sure to talk about it and then some. So thank you guys for watching this little review of UQ Holder slash playthrough of challenge maps of Batman because what better way of playing Batman than talking about vampires, a vampire kind of thing. Anyway, so I'll see you later. See ya!